Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 Hey, what's going on, YouTube? This is your boy Jamar DeFore here once again here to discuss this week's episode of American Horror Story, uh, Roanoke Nightmare, or just Roanoke. Um, I know, I was wondering, uh, based off of the response of the last video, is like, is this something that I guess my particular fan base likes to talk about? Are you guys fans of the show? Uh, ooh, excuse me, because if so, show appreciation, show, share the video, maybe like it, tweet it out a bit. Because uh, compared to like RuPaul's Drag Race and uh, just some of my other videos, it seemed like American Horror Story Empire was kind of like on the lower end of the viewership. So let me know if y'all uh, want to keep these reviews going. Because if not, we could just stick with RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to talk about this uh, week's episode of uh, what you call, I was about to say Love and Hip Hop. Um, <laughs> American Horror Story. So it starts off with the last one again where we saw that the uh, last week homegirl lost her daughter up in the damn tree and she has this whole search party. The FBI is coming out. They're doing this whole bit. And every time that these police or these FBI, any, any type of authority figure has been showcased in this uh, series, it just looks like they could care less. They, it, No matter how crazy... The things are that they show these people they still I feel like they have an attitude of oh these people are crazy <laughs> and they don't know what they're probably out here making all this stuff up oh, excuse me but it's just like okay well and she says something like use there's nothing worse well there's no feeling like losing a child especially when you don't know what happened, and it was in the dead of night, well, it wasn't the dead of night, because it was really in the middle of the day, but the child just instantly was here one minute and gone the next, and you find, like, her belongings, or her jacket, up amongst the tallest tree, and you just don't know, especially given all the extra stuff that's been going on at this location, it's still... I still can't put two and two together as to why she thought it was a good idea to bring her back to the house. You brought her there the first time, spend time with her. Okay. But after she said what she said and the stuff that's happened that you witnessed, you want to bring her back here? That made no sense to me. That made no sense. So it's almost like you asked for this. You clearly didn't care about the danger. So whatever. I ain't going to kick the girl down while she's, you know... I can kick her while she's down, but still, it just didn't seem like a smart decision. So, they're looking around, they go outside, and they meet, they get to this farm, which I believe was the farm that belonged to those people who were trying to bid for the house at the same time. They walk through that kitchen. It, oh, it was disgusting. It was repulsive. They had, like, animal heads in the fridge. There was flies and bugs all up in there. It was, I'm glad that I had already eaten, okay, uh, after, uh, after or before I watched this. Because if I was eating, because I had a friend over at the time who was eating something with me and he just lost all <laughs> his appetite. Because <laughs> it was disgusting, man. Oh, you could, it was almost like you could smell it through the screen, you know. But as they're, you know, searching through this whole property, they go out to this farmhouse and they see... I'm not even sure I, I almost fully of what I saw. And I'm going to I'm gonna say what I think I saw. Y'all tell me if I'm right. So there were two inbreed males who looked like they were preteen, early teenagers. They were suckling. They were suckling on a dead pig's udders. The pig looked dead. And if it was dead, how healthy is that milk? Any animal science majors out there or people who are veterinarians or know about how, you know, that works, isn't the milk from any animal or mammal tainted after they're dead? I would imagine it's probably not the best thing. But then again, if they're inbred, their whole existence is unnatural, then who knows how their body works? So I just... Mm. 
that was disturbing. I could have gone without that particular scene, but it was imperative for the story, so we're going to keep going. The husband comes, and I was actually surprised by the husband's reaction. I thought he would be a little more upset, or at least more... Okay. I was confused because he felt like she was gonna she came to kidnap him and she set up this whole thing so he so she could kidnap her and take her somewhere else now excuse me they didn't really go too far into like her history other than the fact that he that she you know forgot her child at school a few times uh or, I, I don't know, it just didn't seem like the history was there as to why anybody would go through all of this for the sake of their child. Like, you're going to get FBI and police involved when you're just hiding her somewhere to sneak off with her later. To me, the, the, the logic wasn't there. It didn't seem like even if you were somebody that you, you know, maybe be, you know, in a spat with, that kind of didn't make sense. Like, who would really involve the cops? Like, that's a federal, you know crime like why would i involve the cops if i'm trying to do something stupid like that doesn't make any sense i was i would thought he would be more you know angry just at the fact that you took her and didn't tell her but he was so focused on the fact of why she did it and it didn't make sense to me <laughs> or, i don't know maybe it's just me y'all let me know but at this point the baby has been gone for about what this is 72 hours how long is that what three four days and after, I think it's a rule, I don't know if it's everywhere, but after 72 hours, after a person is considered missing, they may no longer be a missing person. They may just be looking for a body at this point. And you can only imagine, like, as a parent, how terrifying it can be to not only not know where your child is, but whether or not they're even alive at this point. So there would, there would be no sleep. There can be no peace of mind, no just comfort at all so i'm just like i can't imagine what that would be like but at the same time like i told y'all why did you bring the child back to this place <laughs> it was stupid it was stupid um so as the mom and daddy they they have a little spat about i guess he's uh, accusing her of these accusations and he goes and almost like slaps her up a little bit now 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 Matt as a big brother. Well, I don't know if I don't know if they're if she's older than him or not. It really, really, it doesn't even matter. But that's his sister. He, this this husband gonna slap up his sister. He was like, hold up, wait a minute now, goddamn it, <laughs> wait a minute. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care what y'all going through, but you ain't gonna put no hands on her though. So, <laughs> so he he walked up, and I guess you know Shelby kind of was like you know tried to stop him, and then Lee was like, it's okay, it's okay, I got this. He was like, wait a minute now, I don't. I don't care if you family or not. <laughs> we about to go down. Um, so they're out there looking. And then she calls Matt for something. And as they're going out, they find, was it later that night? They guess they find that, uh, no, 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 no. Did somebody call? No, what it was was later on that night, Matt got a phone call. That's what it was. Matt got a phone call in the middle of the night, and then he woke Lee up and asked, you know, uh, like, did they find Florida? Did they find her? And he said, well, the police found something. They went out there in the woods, and they saw a burnt body hung up on a cross or whatever that was. It was whatever it was was some creepy stuff. Uh, and... You know, I guess the initial thought is, is this flora? But then just looking at the structure of the body, this looked like the body of an adult. Okay, not, you know, more so of a child. So I'm like, who is this? And then she pulled, they said they pulled something off the body. And I couldn't even really tell what it was, like a pendant or some sort. But she identified it as her ex-husband's pendant. So that was Mason up on that cross, burnt up and fried. Okay, and stir fried up on this cross. So I'm like, well... I guess you don't have to worry about him anymore going to the judge. <laughs> you have sole custody of Florida, Florida now, wherever she may be. So I'm, I was just curious as to what would go through her mind. Because I'm pretty sure 
that she probably doesn't love him anymore. And at this point, she was seeing him like somebody who's trying to take her daughter away from him. So I'm wondering, out of curiosity, if there's just any type of joy or relief that's like, okay, now I get to finally, you know, have my daughter back from her husband being, you know, stir fried and burnt up like a witch. So once they get back, they check the security cameras to find out that apparently Lee left the house at a certain time in the middle of the night and then came back about what four hours later so they're suspecting that it was actually um lee that went out there and killed mason now honestly that wouldn't be really have been a, a thought that crossed my mind only because of how intricate the killing was and especially given all this other stuff that's been going on like i wouldn't have assumed that she managed to hoist this fully a grown adult male strapped him up against these trees and set him on fire. I That just seems a little too extreme. Okay, and she felt a way about it. And as they were sitting up there discussing it, some random not, some random man uh, walked in. And I guess he's like a psychic and uh, I guess he heard about the news of what was going on with the missing child and he came to help. And I'm just like, who is this man? <laughs> so he's you know I guess he's like a psychic who's in tune with the spirit world and all this other stuff and so he's walking around I guess figuring out like oh she used to hide here and she's been here and she finds a little uh, uh, hood that belonged to Priscilla and all this other stuff so they're like sitting around in a I forget there's like a name of it there's like a little circle and she calls upon the spirits, and then this one of the spirits is, you know, Kathy Bates' character. Now, I knew that Kathy Bates' character, whatever her character was, couldn't have been, like, just somebody who was alive at that time. But I wonder how she was a spirit then, but yet when she got hit by that car, she was, like, a physical presence. And how... Shelby was able to see her in the woods, but they're not able to see her now. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm guessing this is like a power that the spirits can make themselves visible when they want to type of thing. Can they get physical bodies when they want to, too? I was just curious about that. Um, where are we? Oh, this was the, <laughs> this was the comedic part of the episode for me. So, as she's talking, as this random man, I think her name was, uh, what, what did they say her name was? It was something random. Skittle, Ricky, what was that? What was this this person's name? Cricket? Something like that. I couldn't remember what the, it was something, a random word like that. But they said, well, you know, I, I know where Flora is, or I can take you to her. And, of course, they're all getting excited. They're, like, getting relief and, you know, hope. This... <laughs> This man gets up to say, well, that's going to be $25,000. I take Visa, MasterCard, and Discover. <laughs> I was like, how are you going to sit here and give these people hope? And all this other extra normal, extra, uh, uh, all this paranormal activity is going on. And you tell me that you can tell me where my child is, but you have a price of $25,000. And then you have to tell me what type of credit cards you accept. <laughs> <laughs> man please Matt was not with that he was like so you're trying to con me he was trying to think of all these different explanations of the window breaking and the candle all this other stuff at this point Lee was like look I don't know what to believe right now and she pulls out a gun and she's like look all I know is <laughs> you better take me to my daughter at this point she's, she's losing all rationale at this point she's just like look I don't know if you're real or not, but if you claim these things that you claim, you best to get to making some results. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so they calm her down and they just ask her to leave because they think she's a con. They think she's doing all this stuff and whatnot. And then she goes and as she's on her way out, she whispers something to, uh, to Lee. And we don't really know what it was that she said at first, but it turns out that she said, you know, Emily says hi, and why didn't you look for her or something like that? 
And so you could tell, I guess she had like a uh, expression of horror or like shock. And we find out that she had an, uh, a daughter previously when she was, what, 18 or really, really young. And she just went inside the grocery store, I guess, to get like some sauce or something random. And she left the baby in the car for like five minutes and she came back and she was gone. So I'm like, so you just, you just have a bad, you just have bad, bad parenting decisions. You leave your child in the car to go to the grocery store. You bring your child back to a house where there's literal people trying to kill you and with people with torches and people hanging stuff and murder. Like, you're just, I I, I understand why the daddy I mean, is, is trying to keep you away from them because you have no right mind about yourself. You you make you make poor decisions, baby. You, you make poor decisions. <laughs> um... Let's see, where are we? So we get like in some of the backstory on Kathy Bates' character. I guess her character was based like in the, I believe it said the 1500s, 1500s, 1600s. And uh, they were colonial, co I can't say the word, colonialists. Col they were part of a colony. <laughs> I don't know if I can't get the word out. But apparently uh, Kathy Bates' character was sort of like a, a dictator-ish. She was almost like a very similar type of character from what she played in season three of the coven from you know being that uh slave master she kind of had the same attitude or the, it was pretty much the same character to me um but everybody wasn't really happy with how she was you know handling things and there was one guy who kind of betrayed her and locked her in this uh whatever this face mask what have you and her son was given the option, like, you can either lock her up or I'm going to kill you too. And he chose to lock her up. He apologized. And I guess you could tell by Kathy's expression that he thought, that she thought he was weak for doing that. So they left her out there to die, basically. And so while she's out there in the woods, she hears some kind of weird pig noises. And some lady comes up with a beating heart. <laughs> And says, eat this and give me your soul or something. I'm like, what? <laughs> and she just did it willy-nilly, didn't ask no questions. I guess the hunger got the best of her, but a beating heart? I'm, I don't know how hungry I am. I don't think if somebody handed me a bloody beating heart, I'm just going to be like, ooh, delicious, you know? <laughs> so... <coughs> Shelby, so they go back, you know, uh, back to present day. And I wish I could remember what it was they were originally looking for. But Lee and Lee, Matt and Shelby were out in the woods. And then as they were looking at something, I can't remember what it was. Uh, Shelby had noticed that Matt was missing. So she goes to look for Matt and she's out there with the flashlight. And, um, <laughs> she first sees two guys and, uh, I don't even know how to, <laughs> okay, because I know I'm trying to be as PG as possible. She sees two guys standing next to each other in, um, doing a, um, uh, um, a, a jerkular motion so to speak. And while they were doing that, you could hear the sounds of... Y'all know that sound. Y'all know what sound I'm talking about. <laughs> that, you know, clap together of the skin. Y'all know... Y'all know that sound I'm talking about. <laughs> so she hears that and she flashes up the light and sees her husband drilling, going in on that, whatever that chick was that was out in the woods with Kathy Bates' character almost like 500 years ago. And you know what? I didn't even notice until the credits rolled that that was Lady Gaga. I did not recognize her at all. And it just was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, he, like, he had this expression on his face like he was like, not even fully there. So I don't know if she was seeing things. Because when he approached her later and she was pissed off at him, she was like, who is she? And he's like, what are you talking about? 
So I'm like, okay, did he did he do that and his mind went elsewhere? Was he under a spell or something? Or was she seeing things, you know? I'm like, which which is it? Because <laughs> he don't know what she's talking about. She thinks he's crazy. And then Shelby decided to be petty, took it upon herself to be petty, and called, I guess, from her feelings of being what she thought was cheated on, she called the police to have Lee arrested for kidnapping. But my thing is, how is that really hurting Matt, though? Like, I mean, you're hurting his sister, which I guess he probably cares about, but it seemed... I didn't understand why you chose to rat her out when he was the one that did you wrong. And I was a little confused by that, but that that was an ending. I didn't see that coming at all. And I guess that's what makes it fun. <laughs> Woo! All right. Well, that was the episode. That was chapter three, y'all. Let me know what y'all think. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Jamar84. It's J-A-M-A-R-84. Uh, tweet me. Share this video anywhere you can on my... Do you have, do people have MySpace still? On, uh, you know, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere you can. And I really, really greatly appreciate it. And I'm actually about to watch Empire because I haven't seen it yet. And I'm going to come back with that video. And so until next time, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Like, like, share, subscribe. Jamar, Washington, Washington, Washington.